So, Rodney, as the lead singer for the band, uh, you've got uh, an interest in family history. Uh, your mother evidently sang with Duke Ellington, and your father played drums with Charlie Parker. Now, can you enlighten yeah. us about that upbringing? My, my family pretty much was, you know, uh, really strong. Uh, those days within nightclubs and, you know, uh, we owned uh, Trotter's Turf and different things in Milwaukee. And, and then my father had um, the walk. And a lot of them play. They changed the movie out and stuff like that. They would, you know, play a lot of the... Um, you know, they would do a lot of live bands and stuff within that. Yeah. And uh, eventually my mom ended up, you know, because she was she was a jazz singer and she basically was on the road a lot uh, touring with the different bands that she was locking in. And um, just the various people like, you know, with the Duke Ellington Band, Night King Cole, all of these guys, they was, everybody was on that circuit. And she was yeah. one of the main singers out there along with, you know, Lena and everybody else doing the big band stuff. And um, it was one of the things where um, as we was growing up and my brothers and sisters, cause we we're from a real huge family. Um, we basically, you know, traveled with her. She never wanted to leave us, you know, there with her, with her mom and them. She always wanted us with, with, with us, with them, with her. Right. So she basically, you know, would take us out wherever she was posted up and wherever she was playing, she would go there. Wow. And uh, she ended up uh, in, uh, what, like, we ended up in Indianapolis and she ended up playing for the um, Carousel Lounge down there with, um, with Count Fisher, uh, which again, ended up being my stepdad, uh, wow. based around um, his involvement with her at the club and things of that nature. Yeah. And they had artists, not, not just with Duke and everybody else. They had um, artists that used to come through there. Red Fox used to, you know, be through there. Jimmy Smith, Jack McDuff. Um, um, so you had the who's who that used to come through the Carousel Lounge and, and play, and she was right there in it. And they was very strong where they ended up buying the carousel lounge and turning it you know because uh, they at the time it was owned by jack ruby yeah. and um it was a thing where they ended up buying it and turning it into the chateau they count in eve yeah. and um, from there it was you know just continuous you know mm -hmm. from uh ico nat king co um used to come through there and as we migrated to michigan at the time from Indianapolis, it just carried on because right. I mean, from, I mean, it was Don Ellis and, and you got, you got just the who's who used to come through the house at all times. So, and you know, was, I was pretty yeah. much raised under some, some heavy, heavy guns there. That's, what I, that's what I was going to say. And there was Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there. Was me, there was me underneath, <laughs> there was me uh, uh, sitting next to the piano or next sitting to next the to the you know, or waking these, up bumping into one of these guys in the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> destined, destined to be a musician. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it was funny because my father at the time, um, uh, Count Fisher, basically, um, and he was the one who, you know, they kicked with a, a lot of people when the uh, Ebony um, 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 magazine used to come through and they do their big fashion shows yeah. in Michigan. He was one of the drummers they used to call to do that because, right. you know, he was one only one that could read, you know, so, right, okay. and he, right. you know, and being able to read the charts. Yeah, but, right. Uh, it, 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 it was just a great experience, totally. My whole family, um, you know, um, just jumped in and, you know, fit in. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we just we just lost you there, but we got we got a lot. I mean, that was brilliant. Um, it'll give, give us enough for that uh, yeah. section. That that was awesome. Um, and you, so your dad your dad played with Charlie Parker then. Um, yeah, he was he was one of the 
drummers there. Yeah. Now you, yeah, you. Yeah, we're, we're losing bird, you, Rodney. It's bird down uh, within the Michigan area. You need to tell your we kids to get off the internet. <laughs> well, it, it is well. Well, I'm, I'm sitting in the in the mountains here of Las Vegas, ah, right, <laughs> so okay. it's right. I'm sitting right up against. I'm, I'm sitting right up against a, a big mountain here. Right. So it. It, it's, it's so. hard to you know. That's why I try to you know. Yeah. Then as I go further out, I think you maybe need to go on the roof. <laughs> I need to go in the room. <laughs> well, I, the mean, room. I, I was in the back. Now maybe I need to go out in the back. Just get on the roof. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I'm gonna go. I, well, I was in the back, and it was like I was trying to uh, see with Charles, and we was basically yes. saying that that was, you know, that the noise factor wasn't that bad. It's just that I kept freezing up. Is yeah, this well, better? Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, we can edit. Obviously, this this thing will be edited out. You know, we're not going to use it all. It'll just take the best stuff out of it. Right. Um, so don't worry too much about it. Um, so, Charles, uh, why are you called the Bass King and you're also called King C? Uh, the Bass King, uh, it came from uh, when I was, uh, I was touring. Well, you know, Billy Preston used to, used to call me that, like, you know, the bass yeah. king or whatever. Yeah. but really the name came from when i was uh when i was uh with debarge and the uh we came off stage one night and from uh, uh and the uh the uh uh manager the road manager yeah uh as soon as i was off stage he walks up to me and he goes the king right <laughs> yeah he goes the <laughs> king and right. i was like he, 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 crowned, he crowned you. He crowned you the king. I mean, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take my head. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Well, it seems to be that you it, it stuck. I mean, you have become uh, the bass king in your genre. Uh, how's yeah. it feel? How's it feel? I mean, it, it's a long time. You've been in this, in, working in this genre for a long time. I mean, you've got to be the king yes. of what you do. I mean. No doubt about of it. Some. I'm gonna the be, king of some. Gonna be king of something. <laughs> be the king of the bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, twelve-year-old professional. I had to. I had to be something. Yeah, yeah. Well, you made it. You definitely made it. My, as, my as sister king. just thought I was the king. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. The way I, people used to come by the house, and you know, everybody wanted to hang out and stuff. So. That yeah. was all good. Yeah, well, I've heard you play, and I would definitely vouch for it. You were the king of that bass. You've certainly nailed right. that bass. Um, I mean, I was talking to you about that bass guitar, and, you know, there's the there's the Fender Jazz, which uh, was kind of used a lot in the early 80s, I remember, by the, the people I played with, uh, Paul Denman in Sade, for example. He had a, a Fender Jazz, but you, you went one step further. You had... Um, Tell me about it. You had a custom Fender with, with pickups, didn't you, mate? Yes. Um, uh, uh, no, uh, I did. I, I liked the P bass, and then I liked the jazz bass, but I didn't just like the jazz bass, and I didn't just like the P bass. Right. I actually, P bass more. So what I wanted was double P bass. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. So what I did is I had double P, uh, the double pickups for the P bass. Yeah. And uh, it was a hot bass, hot, hot bass. And I, I had just finished the Tina Marie concert. Uh, uh, I, w I went to, uh, stopped at a 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, went, I ran in to grab something really fast. I left my car on. Okay. And when I came out, a guy had jumped in my car and just and took off. As oh, I was man. hanging on the door, he slung me off into the driveway. Right. Right, and that was it. He's gone. He took all my bases, all my gear, all my pedals. And you can uh, I had a pedal board that was like just amazing at that time, yeah. you know, back 
days. That was one of my things, doing spin moves and hitting the pedal board and yeah. kicking it. And man, it was just it was cool to watch, you know. Yeah. And uh, well, you just never know that could have gone to some kid who became something special. <laughs> I sure hope so. I you know, sure maybe, hope. you maybe donated it to a worthy cause. He, <laughs> that is, and I think he's talking about this face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you. You just to get it right. You had you had two pickups. You had the pre precision pickups and you had the jazz bass pickups put into this. No, oh, wow. I didn't use the jazz. But I used the precision pickups twice. So you know the precision came with the two little small pickups. Right. Okay. Right. Well, what I did is I had four of those. Right. That was it. Yeah. Right. Wow. That was a big sound. And then that added a preamp in and all this. It was it was it was really. It, Two stuff. That was a big sound. So that's how you how you got that big fat kind of sound. Uh, and we're all going, how is he doing that? We're trying to hit the thing harder. <laughs> and you you don't have to. You've got four pickups. Right. <laughs> now, unfortunately, you know, I switched over to Music Man and I wasn't able to uh uh Lewis Johnson had a music man that that Music Man had made express for him. Yeah, and, yeah. And I met him one day and he told me about this. And and they had uh coiled his pickups so much that that bass was so hot you didn't hardly have to touch it for it to just right. be the loudest. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So no everybody wants to know why their music man doesn't sound like those Johnson's because he had a special made one and nobody at it and they I think he even signed a deal where they would never make one for for anyone else. Yeah, well like, this is it. And this is the advantage you get on that sound. And it's um you know yeah. we're trying to you know in the 80s we're all trying to emulate these big sounds and uh, obviously we haven't got the insider information. <laughs> right exactly. But you guys had but you was one step ahead coming from 72. I, <laughs> I heard something and how you get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we, we just thought that was your thumb. <laughs> you had a big thumb. <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of do too. I do have that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's just, let's talk about uh, Motown again, because I, I, you know, Barry Gordy interests me a lot. Um, he was an absolute genius, and I would say one of the most successful I would say the most successful label owner of all time, you know, um, yeah. from, you know, the, from sixties, the early sixties there, he, he made so many hits. He made so much money. Yeah. He was so successful. It was unbelievable. But you guys have a story about um, playing in his yard or something. You, how did you get to play in Barry Gordy's yard? Uh, my manager, uh, at the time was uh, Skip Starkey and he was uh, really close friends with the Gordys and uh, Barry, uh, uh, I, I hate to call him Barry because I can never call him that anyway. I have to call him Mr. Gordy so I might as well keep that up. Yeah. But uh, Gordy was uh, having a big party in his yard right. and they needed and uh, we got the we got the job. You got so the, the next thing you know, we up in we up in, in Bel Air, <laughs> yeah. in one of the you know most amazing mansions you could ever want to be in, especially for some some guys coming from Nashville, Tennessee at the time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. doing a big show out in in in, in Barry Gordy's backyard, man, it's totally amazing. Amazing, yeah. I mean, what a what a party. <laughs> People that was at this party. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't imagine. Ooh. I can't imagine uh, the the A-listers at that party. Um, yeah, the list that was at amazing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think I think that period was it was a different world. I mean, I, I mean, you know, we have artists today that have have done some good stuff, but I think that was such a magical time um, for music, um, it, and there was so many sort of A-list stars on Motown and you know you can imagine that scene people getting together and then there's you guys again Ozone are back in the frame Ozone are at the party and playing the gig I mean you can't get any better than that can you? No. No. And you, no. Get, free, and you get free drinks. They are free food. <laughs> yeah. 
Amazing. And Amazing times. They really knew how to throw a party. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, we talked about, we talked about Barry Gordy, Diana Ross, Lola yeah. Falana, uh, you know, yeah. just some of the biggest names, you know, in the show business. Yeah, I was talking to Rodney about this. Um, <clears throat> I was talking on Instagram to sort of Rodney about the music industry and, and how it's changed. And, you know, I mean, I come... I come from a, when I was 13, I, I came from a, the 70s background where, you know, everybody had to play an instrument. Um, and then it yeah. got, to, got to the early 80s and we started seeing the Lindrum and samplers. And I experienced that in the studio when I was recording with um, Sharda and, and things started changing. And me, I was taught, I had a thread on uh, Instagram with Rodney about this and the fact that, you know, uh, a lot of stuff is sampled now whereas back in the day yes. you know with Motown everybody played everybody had to play everybody had to have this ability um, to be able to sing play dance whatever uh, for real and you know you was judged on your talent at the time uh, there was no kind of studio gadgets there was no sampling to make things good uh, everybody had to uh, do what it said on the no. team <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you right. You had to be a player, right? You know what I mean? And I right. think, uh, yeah, not make a mistake for four minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, I mean, I found it very odd going um, into the studios in the nineties and not having to sort of sing or play all the way through. You know, everything was just broke down into sections, and then you would build things up. Whereas back in, right. you know, back in the Motown day, everybody just had to deliver for three and a half yeah, minutes. Yeah, ever. You know, but you oh, had we to have rehearsed. that raw talent. You had to have that raw talent. Yeah. And yeah. that was the yeah. thing that, you know, that was, I mean, you, you couldn't get into the studio. You couldn't be around the people yeah. that, that, that we was around if you didn't have talent. I mean, raw talent. If yeah, you yeah. didn't know how to sing, if you didn't know how to play an instrument, it's the yeah. same thing. Like Charles and I, we uh, was was one of our Motown alumni friends. We was uh, and and uh, L. DeBarge, yeah. and uh, it was one of the things where L. was basically if the band wasn't hitting where he wanted to hit, he. Mm -hmm say y'all just be quiet just shut them down and he got on the piano and he was and he showed you his raw talent yeah, and that's yeah. the thing that 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 i mean even to the point where us doing the things that we're doing with the live album and stuff like that that is all raw talent that's no samples there's no um there's no music tracks behind it with you know with our voices in it and stuff like that everything that you hear and everything that you will receive off of that album would it would be all raw talent it would be everything from all the transitions from yeah. the horns and and the breaks and everything those are not sampled in that's yeah, yeah. all played live yeah. and, and, and 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 in live time in real time it works every and time this, yeah. yeah and this is what and this is what we uh, pretty much was, you know, what I was discussing with you is yeah. being able to lock into real time playing, real time talent, real yeah. time not going in and and manufacturing something yeah. to make it great. Yeah, you know? I mean, uh, Carlos Carlos Santana he said there was a quote about um, going back to Betty Davis. Um, very raw talent, very nice. Yeah. He said, that was my girl. He said she was the first Madonna, and I, I believe him on that. But he said um, Madonna is more like Marie Osmond. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, because bottom line, you know, Betty Davis you know, was, you know, Madonna couldn't even, be, wasn't yeah. even in that, you know, couldn't even be, you know, fit in that category. Yeah, so Betty it, Davis was doing, yeah. Betty Davis was, was the funk, was, the, was, was the, the first queen of funk, as far as I'm concerned. You know, her, her funkiness and the things that she was delivering and just her raw image, you know, she was giving you that, that um, she was giving you that flower child image, but with a funky style to it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's what attracted Miles Davis to it. Yeah. And if you notice that when Miles got with Betty, I mean, his the way he dressed, he came out of the suits. And mm -hmm. that's, the, that's where Miles got all of his funk from, all mm -hmm. the funky clothes he was wearing. Yeah. That came from Betty. Yeah. That yeah. came from Betty. And, and, you know, and he turned around and did a funk fusion album, yeah. you know, that basically uh, uh, came from that um, on the corner. Yeah. What was it? Back on the corner or something like that? Yeah. I, think it was, uh, yeah. I mean, we've we've had we've had some big women in in Motown. We've had um, Betty Davis, uh, Sarita Wright, and Tina Marie. And I think oh, well, um, you have you you even had you even had yeah. Rose Banks. Right, we okay. did Rose, you know, uh, uh, which was Sly yeah. Stone's right, okay. uh, uh, sister. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? With yeah, Bubba yeah. and all of them. We did yeah, that whole yeah. album, the Rose album. Yeah, you yeah. know, that was that was over there on Motown as well. And <laughs> and, 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 shoot, and even at Holland Doja Holland, we had Ruth Copeland. Right. You know, that was right. doing a lot of funky stuff and was, was banging it. And then it was over there with Chairman of the Board and all of that stuff that was over there. Yeah. So, I mean... You know, you got a lot of people that, you know, they want to sit up there and, and, and say Madonna and these people, but Madonna was another form of fabrication, you know, I yeah. mean, from that whole stuff of like a virgin and all that stuff, that was all fabricated stuff, you know, that yeah. was basically done in the studios. I, I think my, my take on it is that I think these very powerful and very talented women uh, in in that era, just um, influenced the eighties generation. Yeah, because you got Millie Jackson, man. You got yeah. Millie Jackson. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever do you, you you remember my girl that uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, was over there with Bailout? Uh, yeah. uh, what was her name? Um, uh, oh, man, uh, I, she was right on the tip of my tongue, and and yeah. and and, and uh, that I was just thinking of her the other day, and um, just I mean just. Great, great, great women that has been there, man. I mean, like yeah, Charles look, mentioned, Lola Falana. Lola yeah, was funky yeah. girl too. Yeah. Lola mm -hmm. Falana. Hey, Patty Lavelle yeah. and uh, Lavelle they was with the freak Patty out. Patty Lavelle. Yep, there you go. Yeah. You know, Nona, yeah. Nona Hendrix and all of these people. Nona. I mean, come yeah. on, man. You got it's yeah. is it. I mean, we can we uh, 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 we can just go on and on, and even to this day, the young. Yeah. Ladies like Leela James, that a lot of people that is not really dialed into. You see, yeah, that yeah. is that is just ridiculous with her yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, just meeting you guys has really uh, opened my sort of eyes into how these uh, really strong uh, and talented females influenced uh, a whole generation of, of music that we were involved in. Uh, right, yeah. you know, and. It seems to me behind every powerful man was an even more powerful woman um, yes. at the time. Yes. In, in as as far as creativity went, um, yes, and the very very sort of underrated, um, yes. you know, in the history of things. Yeah, because you got Don Silver and yeah. and 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 and, and uh, Janetta Washington and Maya Franklin. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was not just over there with P-Funk, but they was, you know, Dawn and all of them was with, was with the, the, the little sisters with Sly and all of them. Yeah, yeah. You see, so you got that. And then you look at um, my girl that was over there with um, uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, Janetta. I mean, um, yeah. uh, wow, see, all these names is just dropping. But, you know, it's, it's just that, you know, these girls, you know, worked with, and worked, I mean, not just within backgrounds, within leads, they would with just one group, they was working with a lot. You know, the yeah. waters. Yeah. If you look at Maxine yeah. Waters oh. and her sister, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, I, they I, own every album. I actually- uh, now, Yeah, I was, on, I was on records also. Yeah. I, my actual claim to fame is I did actually sing with, I sang back up with one of Earth, Wind & Fire's backing singers called Jimmy. <laughs> mm, I don't okay. know whether you know him, but there was three of them: Jimmy, Jimmy, and Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that that was the closest I ever got to um, performing with Motown was singing with Jimmy back up. Um, <laughs> but um, it was a cool experience. He taught me. I mean, just in that 
in the session that you know I was uh, involved with, he taught me so much uh, about singing and uh, you know working in the studio. It was unbelievable. So God knows what you guys have picked up along the way. <laughs> oh man, I mean, I mean, like I said, women dudes like even more women. I mean, Mona Lisa Young. She was she was over there with uh, Bob Dylan and yeah. doing all the whole of stuff with uh, um, uh, um, um, Joe Crocker and all of these guys. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, everybody, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, kind of just veered off. If you was back there recording, you was putting together an album, you can call on all these people. You can call them, hey, I want you to come in on our album. I want you to, you know, drop, not just come in yeah, yeah. And, and 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 sing and and be able to create but come in and and create an a, a, a natural sound yeah. not just come right. in and say okay we're gonna we, we we sampled over this and y'all just gonna come in and y'all gonna just talk over it y'all just yeah, gonna yeah. rap over it yeah, yeah. y'all can say whatever y'all want to say yeah yeah uh, we got You're 10 minutes nine. we got we got 10 minutes guys um so i just want to talk about to wrap it up i just want to talk about your sort of music and the label idea and the fact that you're going to be pressing vinyl and I think we just need to do this just to promote the product um, right you know, if we can get in this into the show yeah um, so Charles what's the what's the deal with the the music label you're putting a label together and going to put your own music out um, how is that uh, working up, uh... Uh, uh, yeah, we definitely doing our own thing this time, you know, so we, you know, we just want, we want to get the music to the people, you know, without a lot yeah. of riffraff, and, you know, it's just, it's so much easier now to just do it yourself, you know, and, uh, and, you know, I, I, I would, I like people to be able to contact us, you know, being personal now is really a good thing, you know, yeah. back in the days, to hide, you know, we couldn't wait to get yeah. finished, get the last no go hide. You couldn't find us nowhere, you yeah, know. Exactly. But now, that, now, now it's got, about social yeah. media and presence and talking to people and stuff like that. So, yeah. Like uh, you know, like the meet and greet, the meet and greet thing is going to be good. At yeah. That. So that's going to be something, you know. We're going to have a good time. All of yeah. us, the band, we're together, and uh, you know, it's. It's a great thing. So you got a, a vinyl album. You're going to press a vinyl album. That's going to be really cool. 12-inch uh, vinyl, uh, 33 and yes. a half speed, I, I seem to recall. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be really good. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of people old in the vinyl. Old school, new school. Old school, new school, yeah. And you've got a digital hookup. So, you know, any, any of the younger generation can uh, download your music from all the platforms. Yeah. So that's that's going to be good. Um, yeah, and we have a lot of we have a lot of strong DJs and and, and a lot of um, um, internet radio stations that is connected that has been requesting the vinyl from the Funk Fellas Radio yeah. .com, um, and and um, DJ Pledger and all these guys. A lot of the DJs, a lot of the DJs around yeah. here. Then you know, man, get us. Can we get the vinyl? Can we get vinyl because they're yeah. spinning vinyl now. A lot of the DJs out yeah. of New York and everyone is jumping on it and yeah. has been requesting it. So, you know, yeah. we're ready to get it out there too. So we may have, we might have some yeah. white labels, like white labels going around uh, DJs again. How cool is that? Yeah. That is old school. They're yeah. <laughs> gonna love it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so this, so uh, D this, this, this D DLR, DLR Records. DLR Records is, is, is on the up. And um, so you guys can, um, so everybody can go on and, and buy this live album, then that's the, the main thing. Uh, people can get the music even after your show, yeah? I think well, we're, we're looking to... for them. We're looking for We're going to make it available for them to be able to get out there 
and purchase it and being able to, and again, a lot of times you get a lot of these people that, you know, they'll see it and they'll say, oh yeah, it's great. And they, they figure out, how do I get to YouTube or how do I get someplace where they don't have to pay for it? Yeah, but yeah. that's what we need. We need fans to start downloading and start, you know, because that is you actually buying the record, you actually giving the support to the musicians, giving the support yeah, back yeah. to us that Absolutely. we can, you know, get out there and get credit and, and being able to have our gold and platinum. That's how we get gold and platinum. Yeah, yeah. You know, for you guys down and that streaming situation doesn't help us at all. We need yeah. you guys to support us and get our fan base back to, you know, downloading and and, and actually buying the, the, you know, the 45 or buying yeah. the album. That's yeah. the way we make our livelihood. That's the way we can continue to make great music. And that's the way we can get the, you know, these major record companies to come back to us and, 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 and try to get us under their labels and try to, you know, kind of synergize with us to make this thing happen. And the only yeah. way we can yeah. do that is through our fans being able to support us, you know, through the downloads yeah. and then the purchasing of the money. Love the most, you know? If you love, if you're an old school fan, you know, uh, and I, you know, I, hate, I almost hate the word old school, but it's okay. People use it all the time. But if if that's if that's your music, then you know, support it. Uh, yeah. uh, get behind, it, you know. We yeah. So we can continue to bring it to because all we do is invest it right back into into uh, the to, music. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a self fulfilling prophecy isn't it really i mean you know it's yeah. and it's um it's something that needs to to happen for you guys to go and make even better music in the future so i think um, yeah. you know people need to get on download the the live album i mean the live album is incredible i've heard it um and get some vinyl in the collection and then you guys can make more brilliant albums and, you know, we can yes, uh, yes. really enjoy yeah. that in the future. So let's, let's, uh, I wish you luck with that project. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be brilliant uh, to hear that. And, and you, you will be able to buy that, uh, you know, it'll be everywhere on Amazon, Apple, yeah. your Baby, yeah. Spotify, it's there. Cool. Yeah, no. brilliant. All right, guys, that's been fantastic. It was great to chat. 